My father died of a very rare type of cancer very suddenly. At first, I was a bit hesitant to come because I've never been much of a camp person, but we're all here because this one, I guess, I guess devastating part of our lives has brought us all together. I'm Aubrey. A few years ago, my brother died. Um, he was only three years old. I was just in shock for a while. I look forward to getting to know you guys and to starting this lovely week with you guys. Every single person, every single camper in your bunk, every single counselor that's with you, we are all here to support you and all want you to have the best week ever. I spent a week filming at a summer camp with kids who have all lost a significant family member, like a parent or a sibling. In the US, one out of five children are currently grieving the death of someone close to them. So these free camps provide a safe space for kids to share and heal, along with volunteers who, for the most part, have also lost someone. suburb in Chicago and my favorite sport is figure skating. Um, my name is Hila. I live in New York. My favorite ice cream flavor is anything chocolate. You guys can call me Emmy. I'm from Washington DC. My favorite my two favorite sports are track and field and soccer. At any point in time if you're like I need to talk to somebody you can always come to one of us and we'll be here with you 24-7 so anything Were you nervous before you came to camp? A little. Yeah? What were you nervous about? I don't really know. I was just, I was like, just like nervous. Is it because the words grief camp sounds scary? A little. Not yeah. really though. Not really? Okay. Yeah. What did it feel like to see your sister speak at the campfire the first day? So uh, when they called her name, I was like really surprised and I was like, okay. But she like really like, oh, this is real hard. Like. She really like, I think she did a really good job. She did. But, so like really sharing is like maybe the hardest part. Yeah. Because it makes me want to cry, but I don't really like want to cry like in front of everyone else, so yeah. I know they've been through the same thing, but sometimes it's still like hard to talk of course, about it. Of course, because it's also hard for you. Like you could, I could talk to a tree and it could be hard for me. <laughs> the tree's not judging me, right? Yeah. Because sometimes just saying it out loud is hard. Mm -hmm. Especially with like they're, what they're all looking at you. Like I find it easier like if I'm like just like talking to myself or I'm like, looking down. Yeah, yeah. Do you feel like you have to fidget a lot? Yeah, when you talk? I am doing that. <laughs> yeah. Because everyone has great pictures, artwork, we have to put everything up. Did I turn Bob? Can I see? You kind of have the same smile. When you smiled just now, you see that? You have similar smiles. Are you willing to share your story with me? Yeah, let me just take a deep breath. <laughs> um, my mom was murdered in our house. It was a murder for hire, so somebody hired the men to come in our house and murder her. My sisters and I were the ones to find her. Yeah. My dad passed away in 2016. It was kind of like crazy to me because he was so healthy. and He had a heart attack out of the blue, and it was just out of nowhere. I don't know how it really happened. Um, my dad died in 2013 to cancer when I was five. 
It was really hard. I was super young, so I didn't know him all that great, but it, yeah. Um. Our dad, he died of suicide. Unlike other deaths, like natural causes, like um, illness or something, it, uh, it could have been prevented. And um, it's just really hard to know that. And that's it. I think it gave me like really bad anxiety. I had depression, I still do. And I've had thoughts of like killing myself, like suicidal thoughts. I was just in shock for a while. Uh, I would start crying out of nowhere. Oh, same thing. And mostly in school, because um, everybody would be like talking about their dad and like me, I, my dad is in heaven, so I don't really relate to them. I feel like some people at school just like don't understand that much. Some people said I was lying about my story and that made me feel hurt and felt like I couldn't really talk to them about anything. My brother. We'll never ever get to meet his dad again. And it hurts me. And my mom, I mean, she has help, but sometimes she has to do it alone. And that hurts me the most. So I appreciate you guys taking this time to enter into this space again. We're gonna have JJ ask their question. As always, before we get into it, everybody go ahead and take a deep breath. JJ, whenever you're ready. Okay, what tactics have you learned to like, learn how to grieve? Just be able to find people that I can trust and feel safe with and be able to talk to. When everybody, whenever someone would ask, we're just, I'm fine and like, I'm good, just leave me alone right now. Before camp, I was at my lowest. I was like devastated all the time. I would just start crying in the middle of class. Knowing that she's gone really hurts, but every time I would get sad, people would think, oh, you're just doing it for attention. And that made me pretty mad. And I started finding real friends. Similar to you guys, I also kind of suppress like my emotions. And everyone here as a union were able to like share their stories. So I felt comfortable to do mine as well. And I'm not gonna lie, a little bit, I am still kind of suppressing it, trying to forget about it. But I think it's okay to have fun sometimes and try to forget about it. But sometimes you have to let it out. So it doesn't all come up at once. Close your eyes if you feel comfortable. Think of a wish that you have for yourself, a wish that you have for your friends here at camp, for anybody back home. One, two, three. Mm -hmm. All righty, boys. Thank you for your time. You guys can go have fun now. It's the type of environment where you'd want to be vulnerable because everyone here is willing to comfort you. Bye bye. You know, societal standards that like guys that can't show emotion they're supposed to be tough. But it's good to feel vulnerable because you can't always be in a shell. Sometimes, sometimes you might have to stick your head out like a little turtle. And it's not gonna end right away. You're probably gonna grieve for the rest of your life. That doesn't mean it has to be so difficult. Fun? I'm back. Dude, my God, come on. I keep on falling off. It's so unfortunate. I have to say is, um, I do not remember it being like that good. Your smile shines down on me like the sun. Faces in the clouds. I remember how your hands fit in mine, and we dance.
is the night away Sometimes I feel like he's right in front of me, but I can't really see him. Yeah. But like, I know that he's right there, but like, it's weird, cause like, he's not right there, but he is there at the same time. But he's like with you. Yeah. Yeah. Like yes, thank you. You need double the barking for double the fun. Oh, it's too cool. Okay. <laughs> what the? Of course, sometimes I, I'm always thinking, mm -hmm. but the activities, like, they help, like, kind of, like, because I, I like, forget it. everything, and I'm just having so much fun. Yeah. Edinburgh, I swear. You've been so close for so long. How was it? Did you cry today? No. You didn't cry today? Yeah. Did you tell Tag that you cry every single time? I don't know why. But then when I'm like on 1v1s, I'm fine. What was our first one that we had to do? That we shared so like why see. we were here. Yeah. Just how like our dad passed. And then Zaya started crying. Yeah. Yeah, because he lost his dad suddenly too. I know. And then it made me cry. And then I shared about my dad passing too, suddenly. That was last year, hey? It's horrible. Yeah, horrible. I feel so connected because mm -hmm. I have you guys. Yeah. Yeah. Because not many people where we live like have tragedies happen. Yeah. But you like never know how you said because it's invisible yeah. to you. Yeah. yeah. How is four years feel now? Still the same? Yeah. A bit. Your heart still hurt? Yeah. How are you doing? It's hard. Like you think about him sometimes and it's just like, like you don't think it's real. Yeah. You miss him? Yeah. yeah. I miss mine too. You know, it's, it's just amazing to see some of these kids grow and, and open up and talk about some of the struggles that they've had. And then I kind of realized, I'm like, oh my gosh, I wasn't alone. You went through that? Oh my gosh, me too. <laughs> and then, you know, be able to create that correlation. In American culture, we don't talk about death. We don't talk about dying grief. Mm -hmm. It's, oh, just feel better. We, we're so awkward. We don't know what to say. Yeah. It's almost taboo. It's mm -hmm. so, yeah, dying yeah. is taboo. Yeah. It shouldn't be. And to hear someone who's years older than you just say, yeah, my sister died by suicide and I'm very mad at her. <laughs> or there are days where I, I have good memory thinking about my person. And so these nine-year-olds, are able to say, actually, I am mad at my dad. And no one mm -hmm. here is going to say, oh, you shouldn't be mad, don't you miss him? And they can say, no, and it's okay. Mm -hmm. That's one of the cool things about grief with children like in this setting. I only have two more grades, unless Elle wants to do them, but I think she's asleep. Elle's napping, yeah. What's her rest? Because she missed it at a lot of people think that they aren't allowed to be happy after losing someone because sometimes they think it's their fault. Sometimes they think that they did something wrong or something like that. But you can realize that it was not your fault. It's just how life works and that you can grieve a lot easier that way. When my dad was alive, he really wanted a garden in his back in the backyard. So now we call it our dad tree. Yeah. We have a tree for my brother. Yeah. We planted one on the ground and his ashes are in the bottom of it. So it's like, yeah, I either go to his room or I go to the tree. Oh, it's beautiful. That it's really cool, cool that you both have trees like that. Yeah, my dad was cremated with sweet because when he was alive, he ate way too many. Yeah. That's awesome. And so unexpected. <laughs> I know. It made the ashes very sticky. <laughs> Things you only talk about. It. Yeah. <laughs> okay. um, my dad's first birthday after he passed. So in Judaism, you... It's comforting to know that other people have gone through what you go through daily and they have made their life happy after going through so much pain. I've made progress. Like both of my siblings wanted to be like me so much. 
and sometimes sometimes I don't like it but other times it's really cool to know that you have a good influence on your siblings even though he copied me but it's fine <laughs> These people I just met basically yesterday and they already feel like I, I feel like everyone here is my friend and I can talk to them. My mom was a very happy person. She was very caring and open-hearted. He was always there in the pictures and always had a smile. People always say that he has like her face and that I have her like, attitude. like her attitude, yeah. I don't know, it's just good like to know that I can like, compare myself to her. He was a very witty and fun person. Every day he would live as if it were his last. We live life to its fullest in, in honor of him. Raise your hand if you learned something about yourself this week. Raise your hand if you learned something about how people grieve this week. We all grieve very differently, but through our shared experience, there's a lot of similarities. And that's something that brings us all together here. So I'm gonna ask my grief specialist to come up and help with handing out these bags. Decorate it in any way you want. Maybe it's the name of your person. Maybe it's something that has pushed you outside of your comfort zone this week or something that you learned about yourself this week. Was he, he was my friend, I Jackie, Yeah, so that was good. I had like a rainbow, and that was blue, and then clouds that were red, and I don't know my dad's name. The smiley faces, what do they represent again? My mom. Smiling. Um, a couple of my other friends died. My friend Elijah, this is my grandma, and then he, my best friend. He wins the hundred dollar bill. You guys didn't know that? I can't lie. I didn't really want to come, but then I really wanted to come and not want to stay. But it's helped a lot. Meeting people makes it so much better. And like, like so you know, so you know you're not alone. I feel like when you support the person, they always support you back, and I think that's just like what makes me feel better about myself. Put your name on my phone is like bestie. Thank you. Bro, I put them on my phone and then I talked to them pretty much the whole year. Okay, how you doing, Emmy? Good. Good, yeah. How's your week been? Really fun. Yeah? Do you feel excited to go home? Yes and no. Okay, tell me why yes and why Okay, no. so I want to see like my, my mom and my nanny and all my friends again, but I really love camp, so yeah. I don't want to leave. What do you love about camp? Oh, well, everyone's really, really nice. I've learned to like be more open sometimes with like my friends and not just my family. You look, you look like a biker. A biker? Lila. You do look like a biker. Lila. Me? <laughs> yeah, with your vest Lila. and then the glasses. Lila.
you. Hey.